I'm going to do a demonstration of the anatomy of the conjunctiva and in particular its relationship to surrounding anatomical structures, especially the eyeball and the eyelids. To do this, I'm going to use a very simple model that consists of the eyeball, which I've got here. I've drawn on the cornea. So this part here is the sclera and the black line that I've drawn is the limbus. So in addition to the eyeball, I'm going to use this model that I've made out of fabric. And this represents, this black fabric here represents hairy skin, the skin of the face and eyelids. And this fleshy coloured material on the inside represents the conjunctiva. So I'll start with this part of the model. So as I just said, the black represents the hairy skin of the face. So this is a black dog or cat. And what we've got here is the upper eyelid, the lower eyelid, and this is the left eye of the animal, so that makes this the medial canthus and this the lateral canthus. Now the conjunctiva is attached at one of its extremities to the free margins of the eyelids. So if we look inside this upper eyelid, we can see here the skin comes as far as this and then we have the conjunctiva on the inside of the eyelid. Same with the lower lid. Now, from this free margin, the conjunctiva actually lines the internal surface of the upper and lower eyelid. So if we look inside the eyelid, we see the conjunctiva passes along that internal surface. Then when it reaches the innermost uh, extremity of the eyelid, it actually does a U-turn back on itself. And to do that we have to look in into here. So after passing along the internal surface of the eyelid, right about where my finger is here, it turns around and comes back this way. Now where it comes to, we'll worry about in a moment. I just want to show you that it does the same thing with the lower eyelid. So if we uh, turn, or avert or turn out the lower eyelid, we see again the conjunctiva lining the internal surface of the eyelid. And then, deep down in here, it does a U-turn and it comes back forming a blind pouch. So it forms a blind pouch dorsally for the upper eyelid and it forms a blind pouch ventrally with the lower eyelid. The point at which the conjunctiva turns around is called the fornix. So there is a dorsal fornix and there is a ventral fornix. Now I've said that the conjunctiva turns around and comes back on itself, but where does it go to? Well, in my model, it goes to this ring. So this is the other extremity of the, or other boundary, if you like, of the conjunctiva. What we're going to do now is attach this boundary to the eyeball. So this, this edge of the conjunctiva is actually firmly attached to the eyeball. In fact, it's attached around the limbus here, so around that black line. So I'm going to take this ring-like boundary of the conjunctiva and I'm going to place it onto the limbus here, onto the eyeball at the limbus. So we'll go 
like that. And when you do that, what you notice is that most of the conjunctiva has disappeared. So when we look at the animal front on, we see very little of the conjunctiva. In fact, in this model we're seeing a bit more than you would see in a live animal. But we're seeing it here at the medial canthus, and we're seeing a little bit here at the lateral canthus. Now that we've got this part of the model in place, we can also uh, talk a little bit more about the different regions of the conjunctiva and how they're named. So the part of the conjunctiva that lines the inside of the eyelid, that's called the palpebral conjunctiva because the word palpebra refers to the eyelid. I already explained that where the conjunctiva turns around does the U-turn is called the fornix. So from the palpebral conjunctiva it turns around at the fornix and then where it comes back along the surface of the eyeball towards the limbus, so in this region here it's called the bulbar conjunctiva because it's in association with the eyeball or the bulb. So, just to go through that again, we have palpebral conjunctiva on the inside of the eyelid. We have the fornix deep down in that pocket where the conjunctiva turns around. And then we have the bulbar conjunctiva on the surface of the eyeball as far as the limbus. At the limbus, the conjunctiva ends. So this is a very important point. There is no conjunctiva on the cornea. In fact, the only thing in the normal eye that is present over the top of the cornea is the precorneal tear film. Except when the animal is blinking, of course. Then the eyelids close and the eyelids and conjunctiva do briefly cover the cornea. But in the non-blinking eye, the only thing that's over the surface of the cornea is the precorneal tear film. Because the conjunctiva, the bulbar conjunctiva, ends at the limbus. In fact, the epithelium of the conjunctiva is continuous at the limbus with the anterior epithelium of the cornea. So, although we can't actually see very much of the conjunctiva when we just look at the animal, front on, the conjunctiva is actually quite an extensive structure. In fact, the pouch formed by the palpebral conjunctiva going into the fornix and then coming back as the bulbar conjunctiva creates quite a deep pouch, as I mentioned earlier, dorsally and ventrally. And that pouch is known as the conjunctival sac. Many of you will have noticed that this model is still incomplete. There's an anatomical structure associated with the conjunctiva that's missing, and that's the third eyelid. And the third eyelid is, of course, located at the medial canthus. The third eyelid is, in fact, a fold of conjunctiva that is supported internally by a T-shaped piece of cartilage which I've reproduced here in part. So what I'm going to do is insert this piece of cartilage into the fabric that represents the conjunctiva to demonstrate the internal and external lining of the third eyelid. So if I pull back the skin, here's our conjunctiva, and I'm going to push that into here so it becomes covered on both sides by conjunctiva and push it up into position here at the medial canthus. So I'm going to pull that third eyelid up as if I was um, causing it to pass over the surface of the eye 
and we see this is the um, cartilage and we see conjunctiva on its external surface and if I pull it around on its internal surface as well. So what it in, happens in effect is that you get a little pouch here of conjunctiva between the bulbar conjunctiva and the internal surface of the third eyelid and another pouch here between the external surface of the third eyelid and the palpebral conjunctiva. What this all means is that there is quite a lot more to the conjunctiva than we can appreciate just by looking at the animal's eye. To examine the conjunctiva thoroughly, which is an important part of every ophthalmic examination, we actually need to manipulate the eyelids a little bit to make sure that we're seeing all of the surfaces of the conjunctiva, or as much as possible, and that we're looking inside the conjunctival sac, and also examining the third eyelid. Because, as you can appreciate, there's quite a lot of space in here for things to be present without being able to necessarily see them straight away. So things like foreign bodies, say a grass seed, for example, can get caught in one of these pouches and completely disappear from view and yet still cause quite a lot of irritation and inflammation.